Well, nice to meet you finally. Nice to meet you, Corinne. Ciao. There you are. Okay, now I can see you. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Ciao. How are you? I'm good. How are you? We're not, we're not strangers anymore now. We're not strangers anymore. <laughs> I love what we created, by the way. This pack is really special. Yes. Okay. Are you ready to start playing? Yeah. Okay, so the pack says we're not really strangers ex Valentino and the whole idea is to see yourself in somebody else, which is a true form of empathy. Okay, so now I will start, I'll ask you the question first, then we can go back and forth. Okay. Are you ready to get deep and vulnerable? Not really. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Same. We're just gonna have to dive into it. It's okay. When was the last time you felt truly understood by somebody? Who was it and what did they understand? I feel I'm lucky enough to feel always understood. Mm -hmm. But just because maybe I, I do my job and, and everything I do uh, with a lot of passion. So even if people don't really understand, it don't get the point, they really feel the passion and, and they get involved into my own world. So I, I really feel uh, very lucky. I don't. I don't think I have to uh, to be understood by everyone. So it's mm. fine. But uh, because uh, I really feel understood by people, uh, people I like, uh, and I like people that are really curious, uh, people that uh, share passion and emotion and, and a way of seeing life with a kind of dreaming perspective, positive looking for the silver lining always. I love that. What gives you the confidence to not need to be understood by everybody? Where does that come from, from for you? Uh, maybe maybe when, uh, when uh, you grow up or you get older. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? When you grow up or when you get older. If you want yeah, to, you don't that's really, true. You I've don't really this. care to be, uh, uh, to to please anyone, I to mm. I, for me, it's very important uh, to be faithful to myself, uh, to who I am, uh, to my, uh, to be close with my family, with the people I like, with my friends. But uh, um, I don't think you can like everyone can like you. It's impossible. And I agree. But, but people that like you can really love you if you are more uh, clear, precise, and sharp. I love that. I love that. Okay, so I think it's your turn now to ask me the question. Okay. Who in your life can you have more empathy towards? What's getting in that way of that? Hmm. So <laughs> I would say my answer would probably be myself, which is a big theme of the questions in this pack, because I think sometimes that's the hardest person to have empathy towards is ourselves. And for me, especially, I feel like I always try to understand the other perspective, the other point of view. I, I always give people the benefit of the doubt, but then when I mess up or when I screw up, I feel like I automatically punish myself or like really get down on myself instead of just accepting I'm human and I'm, I'll make mistakes and it's okay to be imperfect and I don't need to be perfect to be loved. So I think the, the journey I'm on is just having empathy towards myself, especially when I make a mistake. I think that, I think that uh, people that love you, love you because of, of your imperfections, not because, because it's easy to love someone who is perfect. Right. It's right. kind of universal, but love is something more, uh, or friendship and everything. It's more a, a relationship between people and, uh, and it's something unique. So it's uh, imperfection, I think, defines what people uh, are in a way. I agree. And it's so much more relatable. Like it's hard to relate to someone who's just always perfect. You and know, when you see someone too, let's say, let's say truth. Perfection yeah. is boring. Yeah, that's true. 
<laughs> okay, I have a question for you. My turn or your turn? Um, I think it's my turn to ask you a question now. Okay, great. Okay, what are you still trying to understand about yourself? I'm a complicated person and uh, my mission is to kind of solve all my complexities in arriving to a sort of simplicity. But even to, to go back to the, the previous answer, to be understood by people. But because I am a mix of uh, ratio and uh, emotions, and I like to follow both of my uh, side. And I like, uh, and then I become very complicated. So for yeah. me, it's, uh, my mission is to be uh, clear, to understand the balance. And that's, that's maybe the most difficult thing. So to try to simplify the complexities of who you are? Kind of solve complexity because I don't, I don't want to simplify. I want to, I want to arrive to a sort of simplicity, which is, uh, uh, as Brancusi used to say, that this solved complexities. So, and I, I think I'm that kind of person. I'm, I'm a mix of lots of things together. And uh, arriving to the simplicity me, me, means for me to solve the, the kind of um, mixing feeling, emotion, desires, intuitions, that's, that's Got it. What would you say is like the most complex thing about yourself that, that still maybe puzzles you till this day? Everything is complex about me. Yeah, <laughs> true. That's a great answer. <laughs> okay, I think it's your turn now. So let's choose one. Mm -hmm. What are you still trying to understand about yourself? Is the same you, 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 you made me back. I think it's interesting to know. Yeah, what am I still trying to understand? Yeah. I would say um, in this chapter of my life, I, I kind of jumped into from doing things by myself with we're not really strangers and with this baby of mine. And now there's a team involved and I have to lead the team. And I found myself being a bit like inhibited in how I lead and feeling bad for giving feedback or just feeling shy to tell someone what to do. Like feeling deep down, like maybe I'm not worthy to lead. And that's something I'm trying to figure out about myself is why is that? And how can I be a more fearless leader and more confident and, and feel that worthiness that I belong here and that it's okay that I'm the leader. I don't, I don't need to feel bad about that or be shy about it. I think it's interesting to, especially now in everything is so kind of um, looks, sounds kind of close. I think it's important to be very faithful to yourself. If you have a, yeah. your own story to tell, even if it's not uh, understood, easily understood by everyone. I think, but if it's yours, it's, it's, if it's very personal, I think it's more interesting because otherwise it's just generic and anyone is interested in something generic. It's, uh, I do a lot of mistakes as everyone. And, uh, but this is something that made me as, exactly as I am. So it's, it's fine. You, you learn to accept yourself, to accept your balance, to accept, uh, what, who you are actually. Yeah, I love that. What has helped you become a great leader? And how do you define a great leader? I think, I think that it's uh, passion, talent, and a uh, lot of work. Because you, uh, I think you have to, to be a leader, you have to, to give a good example. For, for, for first, for sure. Then you will have to dream. Otherwise, you, you, you don't allow people to dream with you if you don't dream yourself. Ooh, I love that. And you have to, if you want to involve 
people in your dreams, you, you have to be the first one to dream. You can, you can feel the responsibilities. You have to feel uh, the dreams. And uh, that's very important to me. I don't, want, I don't want execution from people. I want same passion, same love, same care I put in every day of my job. And so if I do it, I know that people will do it with me. Mm, I love that answer. That's true. I love I love that. You have to be the dreamer in order to you have gather the dream in order to in order to allow people to dream with you, to get involved in your dreams, to uh, to feel the emotions. Because you really know if uh, you just create beauty or you create emotions and desires and dreams. It's mm. something different. It's uh, it's not about surface. It's about uh, a sort of feeling and a way of being. And uh, so it is not about the perfection of the surfaces, but it's about uh, the uh, real human uh, feelings. Hmm. So good. Okay. So my next question for you is, let's see. Oh, I'll ask you this question. Who in your life can you have more empathy towards? What's getting in the way of that? Empathy uh, is, uh, is what defines us as human beings. So empathy is, uh, for me, is what is very important. It's what bonds us together. And I feel empathy for my wife, my children, my friends, and all people, people that, uh, that dream with me and uh, people that are really curious about Actually, I'm very, uh, I feel empathy with people who have a story to tell, uh, who have something uh, to share in terms of emotions, in terms of uh, uh, truths. Because I love the authenticity when you, you talk with someone, whoever, whoever he or she is. I like when, uh, when you, you get in touch with someone. It, mm -hmm. Even if for a moment, but you remember that moment if it's truth. Absolutely. Yeah, the truth will, will stay with you always. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so who in your life, though, do you, who in your life can you have more empathy towards? Like, who do you want to have more empathy towards that perhaps like you don't right now? Uh, it's difficult to do names uh, because it's... Uh, uh, it's of course people that that I love and people that love me it, and it's kind of easy to say but yeah empathy is uh, is also I, I, as I was saying it's also a moment you can share with someone so mm -hmm. it, uh, it can happen many times uh, in uh, in your life in your days in every uh, in every moment of your of your life yeah Definitely. And it, that's kind of richness because it belongs to you. It will stay with you forever if you, if you get in touch with someone. Empathy is, is a kind of connection with people. And Absolutely. it's not just, uh, uh, it's not as love. It's, it's a different thing. It's, uh, it's a connection you can create for a moment or for a life. Mm -hmm. you never know. Yeah. But it will stay with you forever. I, I Absolutely. That. definitely when someone has empathy for something you're going towards it makes you feel less alone and that's like the most healing thing in the world is to know you're not alone in something and who and what about you uh, well that was my my answer was the having more empathy towards myself uh, yeah you, you said maybe you told me before yeah yeah I already answered that one but okay I think it's your turn but that, that's, that's, the, that's too easy as answer. You want me to go deeper? <laughs> of course. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm for... doing unfiltered. Unfilter it? I'm doing unfiltered, like, you know, telling even more. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me and think. If you to yourself, it's kind of easy answer. Well, OK, let me think then. We're not strangers. We're not, we're not really strangers. <laughs> uh, 
Um, okay, I would probably say maybe my parents, the people that raised me, because I think sometimes with the people that raise us and we, we kind of forget that they're people too and that they're going through a lot and they've gone through a lot. And, you know, and it's important just to have more empathy for like, for how, how everything came about. And like today I'm so grateful for everything and how everything has turned out. And just remembering that the people that, that brought me life and that raised me are, are people at the end of the day. They're not just my parents and not just mom and dad, they're humans. And I think it's important to just show more empathy for, for them all the time. That's a nice answer, love that. <laughs> Thank you. So let me, let me think. I have a good one for you. Okay. What would you tell yourself one year ago today? I don't used to plan the future, not really. But uh, for sure, I would never have imagined this kind of situation. And in a way, um, this moment uh, teached me uh, to, to think even less to the future. I, uh, I learned to react to what happens. It's sure that future is uncertain. But uh, uh, I think you have to react every day to what happens. And that's something that I learned in, during this year. It, it's been difficult and very tough sometimes for the world, for all of us. But uh, uh, in a way, it also uh, has been interesting in terms of uh, uh, thoughts, uh, reflection. And uh, it made me think that uh, uh, you, can, you can also do things, even in such difficult moment, you can react with creativity and with, with other people. You can, you can stay together uh, if you really want to do it. So it's, it's, a, it's even more difficult, but you can do it. And uh, that's something that I would never have imagined one year ago. Hmm. So it basically like you it reaffirmed for you like to just be present in the moment and react and planning you can't really plan because you never know what's going to come up so you have to be agile. no so you you can you can plan but uh, if you are uh you know very aware of yourself of people that uh, surround you if you are connected if you really have together i think you can react uh fastly to what happens mm -hmm. yeah you trust yourself and that whatever know, comes up you'll be able to i don't i didn't really know about when year one year ago so it's this is something new for me in a way That's during this year, we did a lot of of things that uh, at the beginning when we just uh, uh we were just wondering these things could look like uh utopia, something impossible to, to, uh, to do. Mm -hmm. They happen it, even, uh, even in such difficult moment, even in, in, uh, in such difficult uh, situation. So I like to think that uh, probably in one year or in two years, we going, going to work is going to be like uh, going to Luna Park. Like a, like a disco after yeah. what we did in this situation. So it's fine. It's so true. That's what really about funny. you? What about you one year ago? Um, hmm. I would say like your dreams are about to come true because so much of, I've been working on We're Not Really Strangers for like years and years and years and my my thing with success is getting to do what I love. And the more that this thing comes together, the more I just get to do what I love. So I think one year ago today, I, I would just tell myself, like, keep going, keep doing this thing, even though it, I think it took a long time for what I'm working on to feel real, to feel like, like a real thing, not just something in my head that I'm imagining. 
So I would just tell myself like, be present and take in all the moments because they're going to be really special and beautiful. Like to know that I would be doing this with you. It's like insane, you know? I have a question for you. Yeah. It's not in the cards. Okay. How did you come up with the idea of we're not stranger? So, so it started for me because I've always loved photographing strangers and interviewing them. So I always had my camera around me and I would go up to random people and ask them questions about whatever I was going through. So if it was heartbreak, I would ask people, did you ever get over your first love? Or I would ask them, what's the most pain you've ever been in that wasn't physical? And through the interactions with strangers, I started feeling less alone in what I was going through. And it started giving me perspective and what I was feeling and I and I got addicted to it so I always had my camera on me I was all like whatever I was doing out and about I would have my camera and I would ask strangers questions but I didn't have anything to show for it right it was just this thing I didn't have a name for it and then a complete stranger that I photographed in downtown at the end of our interview he told me that I would write a book and it would be called, We're Not Really Strangers. So I immediately wrote it down in my phone. I was like, thank you so much. And, and from that name, he gave me that name and I started getting in touch with like the deeper purpose of what I was doing and why I was photographing different people. And I realized it's to show that inside we're all the same. We have more in common than having not in common. And then the idea was how do I gamify it how do i package it in a game so that it could be more accessible for other people because everyone can play a game it feels very like innocent you know like let's just play this game and then at the end of it you're connected so so that was the the way it all kind of came together but that, that was for sure an unpredictable moment of empathy with the with the, the man who gave you the, the name absolutely and he will stay with you Definitely. Yeah. He was able to just kind of, from a brief interaction, sum up what I was doing in a sentence, which is we're not really strangers. And I wish I could thank him. I don't know where he is. I have his photo still, <laughs> but wow. that inter that one moment kind of gave me in a way, a purpose, a oh, name for you it. You understood more about yourself, about your, what you were doing with your photograph. Absolutely. It's like he understood it more than I did at the time. Sometimes it, it could happen because you have, uh, if you have an external point of view, a different perspective, uh, it can give you something that you were not seeing, you were not just understanding because you were doing it. So you were not seeing yourself from, from far. Absolutely. Yeah. So that it's... moment of empathy was unpredictable, but very fantastic for your future. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And, and how about you? This is a question that isn't in the game, but how did you find yourself doing what you're doing today? How did you find what you're passionate about? Actually, I, I, when I was a, when I was a kid, I, I was not dreaming to be a designer when I was a young kid, I was thinking to uh, to be probably a cinema director. Hmm. Then from cinema, I moved to, to fashion photographs and fashion photographer, photo, photo, photographers. And this stood through, through fashion photography that you can, you can even tell stories through. Uh, I always saw pictures as frame of something with a story to tell in wondering what could be before or after. And mm. so from the image, I started to go back and um, do what I, what I do today. I, even today, I always start from the end, from the final image, and then I go back to rebuild the, the image, uh, to focus the, the final picture and to, to build it with my teams, with people, but in a way, that moment when I was a kid and everything was very hard for me, I never would have dreamed in my life to be a uh, creative director of Valentino. I was a kid uh, grown up in a, in a place uh, 
uh, in a in the seaside place near Roma, so not uh, the big metropole, not from uh, you know the big family, so very unpredictable. And uh, and and I always, even now, I always try to keep uh, that kind of the kid with me because I think that those kind of eyes gave me uh, the the need of dreaming, and I want to keep that. Absolutely. That's so cool. Wow. That's really interesting how your, your passion evolved, but it's, it's the same thing like filmmaking, it's telling a story and now you're just telling a story through what you're doing today. I think it's important to tell stories and to, to deliver values through to the job you do. And the job can be a sort of language you use to mm -hmm. So image for me is, uh, is, is my language. Fashion is my language and I, and I tell stories and I deliver values through that kind of image, that fashion. Mm, I love that. And That's it's a great opportunity. Answer. You know, when, when you know that uh, life, I think I always thought that life is about opportunity. When I had one, I took it. Hmm. It's about one opportunity. If you have many, maybe you don't really get the point. If you don't have so many, if you have one, you catch it. Absolutely. Even if you're scared, you got to go for it. Yeah, of course, you can be scared. Yep. But uh, if, uh, if, uh, if, I, if it's about your dream, about yourself, you, you bet that you will uh, follow it. I love that. I love that. Okay. Are you ready for the next one? Ready. Okay. So both players write down a compliment to one another, fold and exchange, open only once you two have parted. Okay. So we have to write it down. I don't know. Maybe we'll mail it to each other or something. <laughs> okay. So I'll read you mine. So this is mine. Um, I said, I love your vulnerability in the art you create and your openness to play winners with me. And I also love your office. <laughs> Thank you. But I will say that it was just by one word and I, I did this one. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Wait, I need to take a picture. Wait, hold that up. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Oh, like, I'll hold mine up too, just so. One word. Yeah. And you know, that word can say a lot. Yes, it can. Sometimes one word says it all. Um, well, I think this is all of the questions that we had prepped, but I have another, I have a last question for you. Okay. <laughs> Which is why did you, I'm curious what compelled you to want to do this project together? I told you because I'm curious about people. I I'm always uh, I've always been very inspired by people. Uh, I would say that uh, as a designer too, I I don't get inspiration from uh, places, uh, exhibitions, or you know paintings. Everything can be inspiring, but uh, I'm always more inspired by people and uh, the, the, the emotion, what I feel from people. And so say from an, an exhibition, I, I like to, to think how, uh, what the artist could feel painting that, even more than, than what I see. Oh, I love that. So, through what I see, I try to, to guess who is behind that. So people for me, uh, the inspiration of, of my life, I would say, not only of my job. I love and, that. Uh, I love that. So, so that's, that's, uh, that's why I, I think it's so interesting to, to think we're not strangers. Okay, we'll just do this last question of what does we're not really strangers mean to you? We're not strangers to me means that we had at least one moment of empathy. Mm, I love that answer. I love that. And I hope that's what 
what this pack will do. I think that's what this will do. I hope the same. Yes. Well, thank you so much. It was so good meeting you. Thank you.